If you own your own home in Nassau County and you feel your property taxes are too high, stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to be walking you through exactly how you can grieve your property taxes online. All right, so we're going to jump right into this training, this how-to session. And before we do, you will need a few things. I just want to go over that list. The first thing you're going to want to have is a notepad, something to write or take notes with. The second thing is you're going to want to have a pen or a pencil. And then the final thing you'll need potentially is a calculator, okay, because we will be doing some simple math. So. Once you have those three things, come on back and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is if you are starting off with a blank screen, blank page, or on Google, the first thing you want to do is enter this website. It's lrv.nassaucountyny.gov. That's lrv.nassaucountyny.gov, and that stands for Lands Record Viewer. NassauCountyNY.gov. So this is a website that's maintained by the county and you're going to enter your property address. So I just happen to be working with this property address here. And it's a little tricky because when you enter the name of your street, you don't want to include the suffix. Okay. So what that means is if you live on a street named Greenway Boulevard or um, Greenway Avenue, Greenway Road, Greenway Street, you don't want to enter Street, Boulevard, Road, Avenue. You're just going to enter the word. You're just going to enter the name of the street in and of itself. Then you're going to enter the name of your town as well as your zip code. And you're going to indicate that you are not a robot. And then you're going to hit search. Once you hit the search button, it should take you to another page. On this page, you will see a photo of your property, which should be a little dated. Um, it's not something that's updated regularly. And then what you're looking for is the assessed value of your property, and that's here. We see that right here, it says assessed value 552. Now, if you're wondering what does this mean, is this $552? No, this is, the, this is a number that's rounded to the nearest thousandth based on what the fair market value is. So we see that the fair market value um, as, as developed or determined by the assessor is $551,858. So that number rounded to the nearest thousand is 552,000. Okay, so you're gonna take your pen, you're gonna take your paper, you're gonna jot this number down because this number is what we're gonna be using throughout the duration of this video. All right, so step number one, go to this website, find your assessed value and write it down. So now that we're done with step one, I'm just gonna go back to my Google homepage just to make it easy. And we're gonna go to another website. So the whole point of filing a tax grievance is to prove to the county that there are similar properties which are worth less than what they're saying your property is worth. So we have to go and find those similar properties. Okay, so we're going to go to a different website to search for those similar properties. The second website we're going to use is NassauCountyNY.gov. All right, so website number two, NassauCountyNY.gov. We go to this website and we're going to click see the top it has all of these various options we're going to click on departments just click on it once you click on departments you're going to want to look for the assessment review commission department which is the fourth down once you get to that department click on that then you're going to want to click on the acronym ARROW, which stands for Assessment Review on the Web. So click on that. And now we're going to click on where it says Sales Locator, which is a third down on the left. Okay, remember we're trying to find similar properties which sold 
in our neighborhood that are less than our assessment value. All right, and we wrote down our assessment value, it's 552,000. So you click on sales locator and it takes you to a new screen. All right, now this is the screen we're gonna be working with. So we, we just clicked on a whole bunch of buttons, but this is where you should end up. You're gonna do the same exact thing that we did in the first website. You're gonna enter your number, your property address number. So we're working with 36, that's the address that I'm choosing. We're going to enter the street name without the suffix. Okay, so the same rules apply. Do not enter Boulevard, do not enter Avenue, do not enter Road. Just enter the street, the street name. And then you enter the city, uh, city of reference as well as your zip code. Okay, once these four items have been filled out, You can go ahead and click search and you'll see your property populate at the very bottom and it should be highlighted in yellow. So once you see that it populates, go over to the first column where it says parcel ID, hover over the numbers below that and it should allow you, it should turn into a hand, right? So it goes from an arrow to a hand. Once it turns into a hand, click on the parcel ID, click on the actual numbers, all right? Click on those numbers, and that takes you to a new page. Now, um, oftentimes, I guess there might be robots trying to access this information, so they're making it a little bit more difficult. So you, you will have to verify that you are not a robot um, by entering these numbers. So once you do that, you just click continue. And then it takes you to the final page that we are looking for. So now you should see that same photo or similar photo of your property that we saw on the first website, as well as some additional information. So here, what we're going to want to write down is your square footage, which is the living area. So we see that here it says it's 1,700 square feet. And that's really all we need, right? So we have the assessed value of 552,000 and we have the square footage not the lot size, the living area square footage, 1,700 square feet. And we see that it also says the assessed value here. So once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to hit find sales. All right, see that? You click on that button and then this will allow you to locate similar properties which have sold in your neighborhood. Okay, so the very first property, so once that search is complete, you see the very first property is your property. The same photo that we've been seeing throughout, proximity is 0, 0.0 miles, obviously because it's at the center of your property. And it shows you the last sales price and the last sales date for your property, right? Now, the magic number, remember, the magic number we are working with is 552. So we see the sales prices here and we see the sales dates here. So we are looking for properties with sale prices of less than 552 with similar square footage. And the square footage is a bit subjective, but we can get into that and how to kind of finagle it. So this is 689, so we don't want that. It's above 552. This is 615, we don't want that either. 675, 570, 565, none of these properties seem to fit the bill. All right, let's see if there's another page. There's only one page. Okay, so at first glance, it kind of looks like we don't have any options, um, but that's not true. What you can do is, this is an internal search. You can go and conduct an external search. So out of this particular website, all right? So let's do that now and I'll show you how to go about doing so. All right, so we've conducted an internal search um, to try to find similar properties which sold in our neighborhood that are below the assessed value of our property, which is 552,000 for the example that I'm working with, right? And we were unsuccessful in finding similar properties using that internal website. So we're gonna go now and explore an external website to see if we can be um, successful there. So the external website that we're going to be using is Zillow. And that's spelled Z-I-L-L-O. 
zillow.com so we're going to zillow.com and it's, the layout is very similar to google you have a search box in the very center of the website so all you're going to do is you're going to enter your property address in this box so i'm going to enter the address that i'm working with you're going to enter your property address yourself and then you're going to hit search and if you get a box like this or a pop-up like this just x out of it because this is not what we're interested in so you see the x here i'm just going to x out of that and i'm going to i'm going to direct you to click where it says sold there's this yellow circle next to the word sold you might not see sold you might see for sale on yours so make sure that yours says sold so if you see for sale click the for sale button scroll down and click sold and then click done because we are not interested in properties that are currently for sale we're not interested in properties that are currently on the market we're interested in finding similar properties that have already sold um, that are that are in our neighborhood okay so that's why you want to make that change the second change you want to make that allows you to really pinpoint and hone in on exactly what you're looking for is you want to set a maximum value for your price range now if you click on any which is next to your sold button you'll pull up your options for setting price ranges um, we want to set a maximum value because we really want to lower our property taxes right so you want to set a number that allows you to explore and see if there were any properties that sold below that number. Now, obviously, the number should be below your assessed value because we want to find properties which sold for less than your assessed value. So for my example, the property that I'm using had an assessed value of 552000 So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if there were any properties which sold for $100,000 below that for and i'm going to set it at four hundred and fifty thousand. so after i'm done with that i'm going to hit done all right now the final thing you want to do is you want to go to where it says more and you're going to click more so you have sold you have your price range next to that you have beds and baths next to that you have home type next to that it should say more click on more we're going to set two more filters so the very first filter you're going to set is the square footage filter you should have jotted down the square footage of your property all right that was one of the things that we wrote down so for my example the square footage is 1700 so i'm going to set a range for properties that i'm searching for between 1500 and 1750. now i could go as high as 2000 because that's you know those are the options that are here um either way it's fine 1500 to 2000 is is fine just make sure it's not too far off your square footage so 300 less 300 above it's okay the next thing you want to do is you want to set the um the date range for when the property sold last 24 months I think is a good number if you want to be a little bit more conservative you can say last 12 months we know property values have been you know rising astronomically these last couple of years so if you if you're able to find something within the last 12 months good on you i'm going to play it safe and i'm going to stretch out that date range and i'm going to go for the last 24 months all right this is the last filter we're going to set once you hit that you can click on done okay now you may not see anything change so what you're going to have to do is on the left hand side of your screen you will see a plus and a minus button hit the minus button once and if you still don't see anything hit it again and hit it again hit it some more so until you're able to see the border of what's what's considered your neighborhood keep hitting that minus button because you should see properties you know unless there aren't any properties that fit that criteria and in that case you would have to go and adjust your criteria i would recommend adjusting the price first you would go a little higher in your max to see if anything falls within that range all right but we have a few properties here that fit our criteria 
So all we have to do is take our pick. So I'm going to work with these three here um, because the property that I'm working with, I know is over here. And these three are the closest to that property. That property is on Greenway Boulevard. So these three properties make sense to me. They're the closest in proximity. So the first property um, is um, this property here. And, you know, before, before we even move forward, let me just say this. You want to make sure you have at least three properties, right? So if that wasn't clear, that's why I'm only working with these three. When you submit your, your grievance, you want to have a minimum of three. I would say three to five is a good number to have. So three is okay. If you can find three that fit the criteria that you're looking for, that fall below your assessed value that have been sold in the last 24 months, you're kind of you're kind of golden. You could start there. So when you have your three properties, there are three things you're going to want to jot down of those properties. Okay, because this information is going to be used to be entered into your your grievance filing. So the very first thing you want to write down on your piece of paper is the address. Okay, so you have here it says 117-23, 238th Street, Elmont, New York, 11003. That's the first thing you want to write down. The second thing you want to write down is the sale price. So this property sold for 440000 And then the final thing you want to write down is the sales date. So this property sold on February 18, 2022. Those three things are key. Um, and you'll need those three things when you submit your filing. Okay, so that's for property number one. Property number two, we're going to write down the same exact information. We're going to write down the property address. Okay, we're going to write down the sales price. And we are going to write down the sales date. And that's for property number two. Property number three, same idea. The address the sales price and the sales date. Okay, so those are the three properties that we're gonna utilize and we have our information that we've written down describing these properties. So let's move, move on to the next step. All right, so the next step is now that we have our three properties which sold for less than our assessed value now we want to calculate the average of the sales price for these three properties so remember the, the three things that i said you would need at the beginning of this video is a piece of paper a pen or a pencil and a calculator because we're going to do some math so now pull out your calculator i'm just going to use a calculator that's on my computer and i know that i have these three sales prices i know that one sales price was 440 I know the second sales price was 405 and I know the final sales price was 440. So now the average, I would just divide that by three and I get 428,000. Okay, we can just round that to 1,000. All right, so now that we have calculated the, the um, average of these sales prices now we can move on to part two which is the filing of the actual tax grievance so just to summarize at this stage you should have your assessed value for your property you should have your square footage for your property you should also have at least three examples you could have up to five if you would like of similar properties which sold for less than your assessed value. And the information that you should have for these similar properties are the property address, the sales price, as well as the sales date for each of these properties. And then the final thing you should have is the average of the sales price for these three properties. Okay, so now let's move on to part two. All right, so part two is the actual filing of your tax grievance. Now to do that, we're gonna go back to website number two. Now we went to this website before, but I'm gonna start afresh. So I'm back on my Google homepage and 
we're going to go to Nassau County ny.gov. All right, this is the second website that we went to. And we're going to navigate back to the ARC section, the Assessment Review Commission section of this website. To do that, we clicked on Departments. After we clicked on Departments, we clicked on Assessment Review Commission. After we clicked on Assessment Review Commission, we clicked on Arrow, which is Assessment Review on the web. And after we click on Arrow, we are now at the homepage for the Assessment Review Commission. Now, here's where I want you to take a moment and actually register with the Assessment Review Commission. So it is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth button down where it says register with ARC. You're gonna click on that and you're going to register. You're gonna enter your first name, your last name, your address. You're gonna enter the information that's requested of you. Um, and the reason why I'm suggesting that you do so is because this will allow you to track your online submission of your grievance online. You'll be able to receive a receipt number. You'll be able to enter that number anytime you come back to the system. It just makes things a little bit more streamlined and easier. So I've already registered, so I won't re-register and I won't be registering with you. Take a moment and register. And once you've registered, I want you to log in. You may already be logged in, but I want you to log out and then log in with me so we can be on the same page. All right, so go ahead and log in and I'll see you on the other side. All right, so once we have, we've logged in, you should be sent to this new screen here. And here, what we're gonna do is click on where it says file an appeal, which is the fourth option down on the left. So you click on file an appeal and it takes you to a new screen and where it requests you to enter the property type. So it's a drop down, and you're gonna click on the first option, which is for residential properties. So AR1. After you click on AR1, um, some more questions will populate. Essentially, this is the application. This is your uh, this is your tax grievance that you have to file, and it consists of six parts. There's part A, part B, part C, part D, part E, and part F. Okay. So, with respect to um, part A, it's just going to request that you enter your parcel ID. Now, you may not have that on hand, which is fine. So what you're going to enter instead is you're going to enter your property address. So since I'm working with this example, you enter that. Remember, you don't enter the suffix in your street name. You click search and then it searches for that property, and then you can click on the parcel ID and it'll populate that parcel ID for you, as well as your photo. So now this is the, the number that it's, um, or the, the address that it's working with. The grievance is being filed against this property address, if you will. Then you're gonna wanna enter your name, okay? The taxpayer's applicant's name. Who is responsible for paying property taxes on this address? That individual's name goes there. If there are any other owners, you're more than welcome to enter them, their names here. Um, the form that you're going to want to enter is individual since you're filing this um, form on your behalf, since you are the property owner, it's not owned by an LLC or a trust or a corporation, it's owned by you, so you would click individual. That's part A and part A is complete. Now we're moving on to part B. Now, Part B is where we're going to enter the amount that we believe our property is worth. Now, remember, in part one of this video, we calculated the average value of the three properties that we selected that were below, that would sold for below the assessed value. And we found that that average for this property was 428000 Right? We calculated that. So whatever number you calculated is what you're going to enter in this spot right here. Okay, so the second question for Part B is asking us whether or not this property is currently listed for sale. This is a tricky question, okay? Because if this property is currently listed for sale and your sale price is above whatever number you've just entered, 
you may not you may as well not submit this application because you're not going to get your you're not going to get your tax grievance accepted okay so you know if hopefully your property is not for sale if it is and you're selling it for more than you're asking you know more than you're telling them the full market value is of the property you're kind of contradicting yourself all right so i'm going to click no here part c i had already filled out but you you should click on the option that says self it should be a drop down click on the option that says self and then part d would be additional information about your property now it does say optional i would encourage you to fill this out and i would especially encourage you to fill out where it says other facts and the question above other facts because here is where you're able to add context to why you think your property is worth less than the assessor so for instance if you live by the water and you are um, experiencing a lot of flooding or you have um, I don't know unnecessary things that kind of roll in with the, with the body of water that you know trash or if you will you can you can mention and if you have photos that would be even better if you are next to a commercial property a property that's zoned for a commercial building um, that might bring with it some challenges. You might have extra traffic that you don't like. You might have um, more, you know, more noise because you're close to a commercial property. You can click here that you're exposed to a commercial property and you can write more context in other facts um, because the more information you're able to provide to the assessor, the more of a case you're able to make on, on your own behalf the, the more likely your grievance will be accepted um, and acknowledged. So I would encourage you to fill out part D, even though it says optional. Part E is where we're going to enter the information for the similar properties which we found. Now remember, I asked you to write down the address, the date, and the sales price, and that's what they're requesting. They're requesting the address, the date, and the sales price. So we're going to do the same thing that we did for our property. We're going to enter the addresses of the three properties that um, we located. And we're going to enter the date that they were sold. So this one was sold. And we're going to enter the price that they were sold for. All right, so that's number one. We can do this again for number two. 240. Search, click on the parcel ID populate it and then change the date this one was sold 11 16 2020 and this one was sold for four hundred five thousand. all right so in case you've missed the steps and in, in terms of what i'm doing let me just talk them out as i do the final example first thing you want to do is click on the magnifying glass that takes you to a pop-up in the pop-up, you're gonna enter the property address. So the number, we're gonna enter the street number. So my example, it's four. And the street, remember, we're only going to enter the name without the suffix. You should be working with the same town and the same zip code as your own. So you should enter your town and enter your zip code. After you've done that, you click search and it will populate, it'll populate the parcel number for the, the property that you just entered above. Then you're gonna click on the parcel number. As soon as it, it goes from an arrow to a hand, you click on the parcel number and it actually will populate that property into the page for you. It's only gonna populate the parcel number and the address. You're gonna to have to fill in the rest. So you have to fill in the sale date and you have to fill in the sale price. So for the sale date, you should have that written down. So just write down what's in your note. For the sales price, you should also have that written down. So just write down what's in your note and you're done so that is it for part e we have our three properties our three similar properties we have the dates that they sold and we have the sales price and now we're moving on to part f now this is just where you 
Again, describe that you are not a robot for security purposes. You're gonna enter the letters that you see on the left, and then you are going to designate that you are the owner of the property, and then you're gonna hit submit. All right, so just to recap, just to make sure that we have an understanding of what we're doing. So from the top, we have an AR1 residential property for which we are filing a tax grievance, okay? Now, there are six parts. Part A just requests our parcel ID, our property address, and our name. And then it's gonna, we're gonna designate that we are an individual. We're not an LLC, we're not a company, we are an individual. That's part A, part A done. Part B, you're going to enter the average of all of the similar properties that you found, which sold below your assessed value. All right, you enter that and you also show or designate that your property is not for sale. I'm hoping the property is not for sale because if it is, you probably shouldn't be filling this form out. Part C, you're gonna indicate that the representative type is self because you are filing this form on your own. Part D is incredibly subjective, but I encourage you to enter this information um, because it just helps to provide additional context to whoever is reviewing your case. Part E is where you have to provide additional information in support of this number that you indicated your property was worth in Part B. All right, so it says it's optional, but I encourage you to fill it out just so people know you've done your homework. You're not just filing for a grievance for the sake of filing for a grievance. You actually do believe that your taxes are inflated and they are inflated because you did your research and you found three properties that sold for much less than your assessed value within your neighborhood. So this is gonna really give your, your grievance some legs, all right? So that's part E. Part F is where you're just gonna enter this security section, you're gonna enter some letters to indicate that you are not a robot. And then you're gonna sign and indicate that you are the owner of record. After you've completed parts A through F, you can go ahead and submit your application. I'm not gonna submit my application because this is a dummy application. Um, I don't wanna file an appeal on behalf of, of the property owner for this address. So I'm not going to submit this, um, but you should go ahead and submit this. And once you do, you will receive, as I as I expressed before, you will receive um, a receipt or a number that you can utilize to track the progress of, of your grievance. And you'll be able to be notified when the results have come in. Okay, so that's it for part two of this video. Now, if for some reason you are having difficulty finding comparable properties to file with your tax grievance, you can reach out to me for assistance at helpmegrievemytaxes.com. That's helpmegrievemytaxes.com, and I'll put the website in the description for you. But there you can enter your name, your property address, your email address, as well as your phone number. And if I'm able to find properties that fall below your assessment value, I'll go ahead and send them directly to you. All right, that's it for this video. If you found the content useful, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.